back to Hawks Tools. If this is your first visit to my channel, I'm Tom. So I'm a lifelong metal worker, avid tool collector, and practitioner of all things mechanical. Um, during the day, I work at a not very secret government lab um, doing what Q does for James Bond and making sure our agents or our researchers have all the tools and widgets and things they need to do their to do their research. Uh, when I'm home here in my own shop, I'm, I'm on a journey to learn as much as I can about a trade that's been very, very good to me. So, uh, with that said, um, part of my responsibility is to give back to the trade by sharing my skills, knowledge, and experience with people like you out there. So, wonder what we got going on today. Well, the the troops have been crying for an episode of Meatloaf, and if you're not familiar with the Meatloaf series, what it is is kind of a mixed bag of shop and engineering related subjects that probably don't merit a video on their own, uh, but together they, uh, they make something really nice, like a Meatloaf. <laughs> so let's take a look at uh, some stuff that we're, that we're playing around with in the shop, and uh, new tools and items and uh, all kinds of cool stuff going on. Let's check it out. Okay, so this, uh, this first one, I've, been, I've actually had this for a while, and uh, this comes all the way from um, uh, the Netherlands. And it's a fellow, a viewer, um, his name is Jab Neppers, and uh, he's, uh, um, he watches the channel and he put together a, an interesting little uh, care package and sent it along. And it's cool because he, you know, it's, oops, it's in a, a 3D printed box and uh, typical machinist type, uh, everything fits really tight and, uh, and nice here. So, uh, so. It's got some kind of uh, unique items in it, which, uh, which uh, I don't know. This one I, I haven't figured out yet exactly. We ha I have some theories, but uh, um, but let's take a look at uh, what Yob sent us. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's spelled J O B. And um, actually, this is probably the easiest way to get that out. So this first one is a little hammer, um, and. Frankly, I don't have any idea. It, it's got a, a curved chisel face kind of on both sides. This side has a step on it. Um, so it's not quite clear what it's used for. Now he thought it might be a glazier's hammer and that's a person that installs glass and uh, does stuff but uh, and maybe this was you know so that you could um, you know caulk uh, you know some packing in around the glass or something I don't I'm not I'm not sure so if anybody knows what that is or um, has seen one of these before throw some up in the comments because uh, uh, Yab and myself would uh, would certainly like to know uh, a definitive answer there so there's that and then um, this next one let me see if I can pluck that out of there yeah this next one uh, it's just a, uh, a real well-made um, basically a thread chaser okay so let's see if I can open it up so it's got uh, some split dies here which uh, is kind of interesting on its own right so I guess you can clamp it over a, a stud or a screw or whatever and then um, bring down um, against that screw and adjust the clearance between the uh, between the two dies here and um, so it's got some numbers on it, 33 and 31. So I don't know, threads per inch, I don't know, 1B, 2B, don't know. Uh, but anyway, it's got a nice little handle on it and, um, and it's got this uh, cool little, uh, this cool little scroll here, it's a little symbol, man, some maker's mark or something like that. Or, you know, the, um, it's potentially a watchmaker's tool and those guys, I think, the, you know, before, before they let them build a watch, uh, they got to make all their own tools. And that kind of ties in with these next guys here, which are these uh, fancy C-clamps here. These are micrometers. Um, and uh, these are kind of watchmaker uh, uh, micrometers here. So if you want to make a micrometer, I mean, you know, they're not that hard to make here. So this got an adjustable anvil and you know it's kind of an exposed screw but it's perfectly functional 
Now, I should probably take these apart and clean them and uh, so that they run real nice, but, uh, um, and then this one even has a kind of a friction knob here. Now, what's really cool here is, and it's a little bit hard to see, but these had a, a rope neural on it, so this is a curved surface, and you can make a, uh, you can make a neural uh, roller that kind of looks like this, right? Okay, and then it has a pivot here, and then this surface here internally is uh, um, presses against and upsets the metal on the uh, on this raised ridge. Okay, now that probably blew out the camera, so I apologize for that. I didn't lock the exposure, but what's cool is um, uh, whoever had this or whoever made this, these are like worn off, so they used the heck out of this thing, and it's got some very fine little graduations here. And, um, you know, it's metric. Um, now, I didn't say that, you know, in disgust or anything like that. It's a metric micrometer, period, okay? Uh, end of story. So that one's pretty cool and uh, potentially homemade, okay? So, yeah, I should, you know what? I'm going to take those apart and clean them. That'll be nice. All right. Now, see, okay, oh, it went in. I didn't close it all the way. Let's take a look at this little one here. This is just a little itty-bitty job here. Look at that. And very fine tips for getting in, um, um, you know, in a tight space. And let's see, does the index? Yeah, the index is good here, so, right? And, you know, you can tune it if you want. Now, this one's a, probably a little rougher. Um, I don't know, what's, what's the ring for? you keep these around your neck or what? And... Uh, any watchmakers can uh, can comment. What's the? Uh, oh, I guess it's just a uh, so you can tune the tension. Ha! Huh. All right. So, all right. So that makes sense. So that you can kind of you can kind of tweak this a little bit uh, on the fly. Okay, that makes sense. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a really nice little box that you sent along, and uh, with a mystery hammer. So that'll go in the uh, in the hammer collection, and then. Um, I want to show you, Yab. Uh, he's a he just he's a designer, and uh, and he's got some uh, some design chops. And uh, he's a uh, I'll show you a hand sketch that he did here in just a second. Uh, I'm going to set this aside, and then I'll show you. I'll set the exposure so the paper doesn't blow it up, and then we'll look at uh, Yab's hand sketch that he made. So, okay, so here's Yab's hand sketch, and just take a look at it for a second, just kind of overall. You know, he's got a nice section here. He's got some uh, some kind of ISO uh, uh, three-dimensional views here that are that are just nicely done. And you know, this is a little bit tricky to do. Here is a, is kind of a countersink. Um, you know, at an oblique angle like this. You know, to kind of illustrate that, right? And he's done a nice job. And it's in ink, so that means he kind of did it on his first crack, right? So, you know. You can look at the trade craft here, uh, the design trade craft here, right? So what it is, so okay, fine. Yob's a he's a he's a good uh, hand sketcher, but let's look what he did here. These are a couple of versions or a couple of steps to make an expanding collet. Okay, so this comes up every once in a while in the lathe when you want to uh, you want to expand on something internally, right, and kind of hold on to it. And this is a simple way to make a uh, uh, such a thing, okay? So, you know, you turn it, you put a countersink and tap it, then you split it, and then um, what I normally do is I install a screw, put a teeny bit of tension on this, and then turn this to the, the, the diameter that just holds your part, and then you crank down on the screw a little bit, and it opens up, and um, or don't tap it, run it all the way through and put a nut on it. And, um, and then you can hold your part on the ID pretty accurately and turn the OD concentric with that. So anyway, Yab, thank you so much for sending this stuff. This is pretty awesome. Um, it's always fun to look at, uh, uh, look at tools and old tools and things like that and somebody that uh, um, has got some, uh, some sketching chops. Okay, thank you. This next one is, now I, I showed this on a meatloaf, uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago, something like that. Um, and a, a friend of mine, Carla, she made this. Um, she collected, uh, you know, machine uh, data plates, right? And uh, there's some kind of cool ones in here. And uh, anyway, 
she would go to the scrap yard or whatever and if there was a machine that was getting scrapped out it was going to get ground up or whatever she she'd pop the tags off of it and throw them in a bucket or whatever and then she had enough of them finally that um, um, she made this kind of display board right which is pretty cool right and she she said oh hey you want to borrow that you know hang it up in your shop for a while and uh and um you know display it and i said yeah sure that'd be fun and uh anyway she ended up uh, passing away and uh as she knew she was she was going she says well why don't you just keep that thing and uh keep it in your shop it's a it's a good place for it so it's got some sentimental value for me and um you know it's just pretty cool and uh now this is a gentleman at, uh that i work with here and uh, this is probably one of the only surviving uh surviving tags for the swanson scraper and um, um there's a whole story there but uh i won't uh, i won't torture you with that so fast forward um i also am a nerd and i collect data plates that i find and uh, throw them in a bucket and i did a little favor for a friend of mine his name is lowell and uh and he is actually a professional picture framer and uh and yes there's such a thing right so i helped him with a little you know machining problem on his table saw and uh um and he says hey i want to do something for you and i'm like ah, don't worry about it blah 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 anyway uh, uh he saw this and he says oh wow that's really cool and then i showed him all the other plates and he goes hey man i would love to frame those for you so let's take a look at what he did uh, what lowell did for me because it's pretty spectacular so these are some of the tags that uh, that i had collected over the years and uh yeah, once again you you know in this in this trade you know you kind of come across some of these things and uh, you know I've always been kind of intrigued by uh, the shapes and um, um, you know and whatnot and they're just they're just fun to look at and um, so this is what Lowell did for me and uh, so he matted this and then he found this bronze frame that really kind of pops with the uh, with the uh, with the tags themselves and um, I guess what he did was uh, he used some kind of, you know, uh, silicone or whatever to kind of stick them on there and uh, stick them to the mat that's that's behind there. So he's got this nice kind of neutral greenish gray mat behind it and then the bronze frame. Anyway, I just love it. It's it's awesome. And thank you so much, Lowell, if you're watching this video. Uh, um, and I've already started collecting more of them. So <laughs> I think there's another one of these in my life uh, at some point and they're just fun to they're just fun to look at like this came off of a came off of a shear and it was welded to the shear right and when I saw the shear at the scrapyard I think it was hanging on by one little tack and I twisted it off and uh, threw it in my uh, threw it in my pile um, this is a uh, uh, I think that's a Bullard level there and uh, which is uh, yeah I can't quite remember now and uh, so that was attached to some machine tool. I, I just ended up with the tag and, um, you know, level your machine frequently. Let's see, what's the other one that was, uh, I mean, this one, this is a, the shape of this is real pleasing. So I, I've always liked that one. So anyway, um, um, if you collect these tags yourself, here's something you can do with them and uh, have some really nice uh, uh, shop wall art. And, uh, and I tell you, these things, they, they sell for nutty money on, uh, on eBay. So eBay's a kind of a crappy place to, uh, to collect these. You just have to like stumble on them and, uh, and, uh, grab them when you find them. Anyway, thank you so much, Lowell. That's a, that's an awesome display. This next one, um, I don't know. I stumbled on a video, um, online and it was a, um, I think it was, it was a tool kit tour of a um, guy that services uh, CNC equipment. So he did a kind of a um, unpacking of his uh, of his toolbox and showed what he takes out into the field. And you know, I'm always interested in in the kinds of tools that uh, that other people uh, find really useful, right? And you know, I try to learn something from that, right, uh, myself. So he, he showed this, uh, um, you know, it's just a simple dumb putty knife, right? And, um, and then he kind of described how he uses it and, um, and it, oh, I was like, oh, that's, that's actually a pretty good idea, right? And um, now what this is, is um, this is a, uh, a Warner um, stiff, um, 
uh, putty knife, stainless steel blade, and it's thick. Okay, I want to say this is, uh, you know what? I can't remember how thick it is, but it's pretty thick. And it's, uh, for the price, it's, uh, it's a really nice, okay, it's 50 thousandths thick, okay, a little over a millimeter thick. Um, now it's not razor sharp, but uh, it's got a pretty good bevel on it. So he uses it for uh, for prying off little uh, little covers and name plates and things like that that he has to access in behind, and then you know obviously scraping, you know. And this particular one is interesting because it's got a uh, um, a place you can you can hit it with a hammer. And yes, this is a hammer that I was fooling around with. I'm not very happy with that, but. Uh, um, it's, it works. Um, so anyway, uh, this one has metal going all the way through it, so you can, you can whack on the end. Uh, it's got a nice rubber grip. I don't know, I got it on uh, Amazon, I think it was seven or eight bucks, something like that. I bought a couple of them, and, um, I got one out on the barbecue, uh, for, uh, for dealing with the barbecue. And then I keep one in the shop, um, um, you know, on certain parts on the surface grinder, you can get under them with the under an edge or whatever on the magnet, and then give it a little pop to snap it loose pretty easily. That works nicely. But uh, I can recommend this, and um, um, you know, if you're in the market for a uh, scraper slash pry bar slash uh, chisel, um, um, this would uh, probably be a good one. So Warner stiff. Uh, putty knife, stainless steel. All right, you see that blue thing right there? That's what we're talking about. That is the best air hose I have ever found. So I really want to share this with you and let you in on the, um, uh, on this wonderful air hose. Uh, and let me tell you, I've had plenty of air hoses and uh, I'm pretty happy with this one. Now there's one out there that I would like to test, but um, um, I can't uh, bear to fork out the kind of money they want for it. But let's take a look at this one, the cool features, and uh, why this is a great air hose. So this is the first criteria of, of an air hose that it, it has to work. It needs to, be, it needs to be imminently coilable, right? Now, I'm, you know, I'm doing the half twist thing, uh, uh, coiling this up, but it's totally, it's totally behaving itself. Unlike some other poses that, uh, that, uh, will show. So, I mean, you can kind of see how supple it is. I mean, it's something that's hard to illustrate on video, but let's take a look, um, in particular, um, um, at the flexibility and then this kind of unique uh, end feature here, okay? So I had toured a, um, I toured a Google shop uh, down in Palo Alto, um, oh, I don't know, it's been a couple years now, and uh, they were just kind of setting the shop up and, you know, those guys got more money than cents, so they pretty much buy the, uh, the best of, uh, of everything that they can get their hands on. But I saw these air hoses there, and I and I actually touched one, and I went, "Oh my God, this this is this is wonderful." And so here's here's the wonderful qualities, right? Is that it's got this really nice uh, bendability, flexibility to it, okay? And then key is this surface here is it's it's not super slippery, but it's not grabby either. Uh, and when I say grabby, uh, what I mean is um, like a urethane air hose like this. And um, now, you can see I lopped the end of this off because this is probably the worst air hose on the planet. And, um, you know, initially I thought it felt okay maybe and the small diameter would be flexible. It turns out that this thing is terrible and, uh, and I'm going to call them out. Uh, this is coil hose, okay? Um, do not buy one of these uh, unless you want to get pissed, okay? Sorry, coil hose. Um, when, you, when your competition is like this, okay, uh, I'm sorry. See you later, alligator. Okay, so this is Prevost, and uh, I'll put a, a link in the description uh, for all the stuff that I'm talking about. And um, now, I, they only come in 50 foot, um, so uh, if you want shorter than that, you got to cut it and put some fittings in it. But let's take a look at uh, another really cool, and it's a patented feature here, is this disconnect here. Now, 
I'll explain how it works. So when you when you go to release it, okay, there's a there's it's a two stage release. So when you release it, you get this initial uh, this initial release in advance, and then you can pull it out the rest of the way. So and I'll plug it in and I'll get some air in it, right? So what happens is when you push this, it doesn't pew, the what your part or your fitting or whatever it doesn't go flying and advance and then you can just pop it out uh, kind of normally so it's got a, a kind of an interesting safety feature and I don't remember yeah I think you you keep your finger on it and um, and uh, advance and then you pull it out but let's try it and uh, and uh, so let me plug this in and, and get it set up okay so this is fully this is fully pressurized and you can see it's still I mean it's stiffer than it was okay with the air in it but the uh, um, it's it's still nice and supple okay so you see that so it vented okay and your thing didn't go flying okay which is which is a problem with a kind of a, uh, I don't have a normal air hose here but anyway it's just a nice feature um, and then it's got these strain reliefs on both ends and uh, there's the name Prevost P-R-E-V-O-S-T. I think they're made in France. Um, is there a, a Francais mark on this? I don't see anything. Uh, and these are good to 300 PSI or uh, 20 bar um, for our metric folks out there. Uh, anyway, I can highly recommend this and I bought one as kind of a test and I've been using it for a while and I'm like super happy with it and I want to get rid of all my other air hoses. Um, my only complaint is you can't get them in shorter lengths and I like to for machines and whatnot have a hose that's pretty much kind of optimized for that spot and so you're not dealing with excess hose at a machine and um, uh, or whatever and um, um, but you know clearly you can cut these down and, uh, and add fittings to them uh, you know pretty uh, pretty good stuff Okay, so good air hose, and then I showed a bad air hose, and if you're like me, um, and this kind of stuff bugs you uh, when you have a, when you, you know, you're trying to do your job, and uh, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, dragging you down some stupid thing like a damn air hose, right? So. This next one is, uh, is pretty cool. So this, this kind of came out of a... Um, um, a discussion with Robin Renzetti. He and I started talking about uh, creating accurate uh, indexers using precision balls, right? Hence the name Baldex, right? And uh, now this is a commercial unit, clearly, right? Uh, and this is a prototype that uh, that I made. So what this has is it has internal balls. Okay, and you can see here. Let's put a mark on it here. We'll put a registration mark there like that and you get the idea okay okay and let's take it apart so you can see the inside this one's e this this one's easy to take apart here so there's the innards of that okay and what it is is it's a it's an array of of uh, precision uh, ball bearings right uh, spherical balls and these are cheap they're mass produced, they're very, very uh, accurate, they're round. And the idea here is that um, these index in the, in the notches in between, right? So, um, you know, and just talking to Robin about this and, you know, just kind of discussing the points, right? If you can get these in here so that there's no space between them, okay? And in fact, slightly preloaded, right? You have produced an accurate division of the circle, right? So if your hole is, is round, which is pretty easy to do, and it's the right diameter, and you can get the balls in, okay? Um, and they're sitting down, and now you've, you know, because these are accurate to within a few millionths of an inch, right? The diameters, and they're touching each other, you've actually divided the circle extremely accurately, right? So that's kind of the, the premise there. And, um, and in this case here, you know, you see, you'll watch that it lifts slightly when it when it, it finds the next notch, right? So it's kind of like a face gear, like this, okay? Like a face gear situation. Now this is a commercial unit that kind of does the same thing, and it's got uh, 
some mighty balls in it and it's locked up right now and what happens is it lifts it up okay and now we can make an index and it locks up okay now this one's weird because it's uh, seven and a half degrees uh, per index um, so you can do 15s and you know stuff like that um, and uh, yeah you see let's, let me just take it out of alignment slightly yeah okay and you see it drops in so let's pop this apart and uh, so you guys can see the innards of this because it's kind of interesting and um, now all you uh, mechanical designer folks out there this is a uh, uh, you know, this is a mildly interesting project on how to do this and, um, um, you know, with kind of minimal tools and, uh, frankly, no, <laughs> no other kind of angular references, uh, you can create uh, a pretty accurate, um, you know, angular indexing uh, device, okay? Uh, so let's, uh, let me pop this apart and then we'll take a, take a look at the innards. Okay, there's the handle. All right. I'm going to use some uh, power, power, oops, power tools here. Speed this up a little bit for the camera. there and I think my recollection that yeah it just lifts off like that okay so oh if you could only smell it, <laughs> it smells like old grease <laughs> so there's kind of the uh, the guts of the thing and as you can see it's pretty dog simple right so we've got a thrust thrust washer here needle thrust bearing here and then a bunch of balls okay now what they've done is um, you know I would guess that this this outer yeah this outer ring is um, is tapered on the inside so the idea would be that uh, when these touch the inside diameter here um, they're in contact with one another right uh, it's not nice snug contact oh, yeah that grease is, is nasty okay um, so this comes down and then the balls they uh, squish in inward same here um, but and this looks like it's got a uh, a uh, some kind of um, roulon or something a uh, uh, this central radial bearing here and this should, yeah that's removable so that's a so this will be soft here, and then this is hard for these needles to run against. So that's pretty typical on a on a needle thrust bearing like that. And uh, yeah, you know what? Part of me is like, yeah, you should take that apart, Tom, and clean it and make it all real nice, right? And um, <laughs> yeah, you should. Now, um, I took the handle off here, but uh, let's see if I can turn it by hand. There it goes. Okay. So it's got this this inner bit here that's on a thread right and that's what what lifts it up and then allows this to freewheel okay so it's attached to this central threaded portion here and you can see it rotating there and it's a little bit hard to turn there it goes and you can kind of see the thread there um, and that's what raises it up allows it to freewheel and then when you come down it finds an index and locks it in but you know there's not a lot here right so uh, if you wanted to make something like this this is pretty cool now this is not a, ro a rotary table proper right you're not going to be able to do continuous movement with this this is just for straight up straight up indexing and if I was going to build one of these I would make it a horizontal and vertical or a vertical and a horizontal uh, however you uh, however you fly on that so uh, where you can tip it up on its side and then you could uh, um, you know, mount a chuck to it or have a 5C up the center of this or something like that and um, and off you go. Now these are rather large balls here and that's kind of the restriction of the design, right? Is to get a particular number of indexes you got to have a bunch of balls, right? So if you wanted 360 indexes you need 360 balls pretty much, right? Uh, or two rows of 180 that are out of phase or something like that, right? 
and um, you know, it, something uh, kind of uh, interesting to think about. But it makes a real satisfying uh, kind of clicky index uh, uh, for those uh, that are interested. Anyway, Baldex indexer and a uh, uh, little prototype after a, a phone conversation with uh, Robin Renzetti and myself. So, pretty cool. So, who hasn't wanted uh, the ability to change tools quickly in the tailstock? Our kind of normal uh, uh, system of the, the Morse tape right, is, um, you know, you can put a chuck in like this and then you can put a tool in, drill your hole, and then maybe you want to tap, so you take that up, put a tap in. Oh, hey, now I want to countersink the edge of that hole. You can do it with a lathe or, you know, you can do it with a countersink in the tailstock, right? But having more than one, what I call, centerline tool, this tool is on the center of rotation, or pretty close to it anyway, um, is kind of a valuable thing on a manual lathe, right? So CNC lathe, it, find, it just indexes and uh, you can put tools on center or uh, run them off center, whatever you want to do, right? Um, and then if we want to do a, a kind of a switching operation, we have to back this up and do all this stuff. Well, what I did was I ran off, I ran into um, this little guy here. And this is a, um, um, it's called a quick switch holder. It's made by a company called uh, Universal Engineering. And I think they are long, long gone and not in, uh, in business anymore, okay? But basically, it's a quick change tooling system, okay? So it has a, uh, um, a short taper, a machine taper that releases really easily, right? And then some drive dogs here. So you put this in like so, and then it's spring loaded and that ring locks that tool in there. And now you can remove it and put a different one in, okay? Now this particular one, when I got it, it had a brown and sharp taper on it. So um, I hard turned that uh, brown and sharp, which is pretty close to a Morse, but not close enough. So that it's a number three Morse. My tail stock's a number four, so now we put an adapter on it and we're a number four, right? So let's put this in here and uh, find the key. Let's tap it in just so it's nice. And then I'll give you a, a quick demonstration here, right? Um, so let's say, you know, we're, we're making a, uh, a standoff or something like that in the lane, okay? Oop. Okay, let's center drill, Think. all right. So we center drill, and now I wanna switch that. And uh, now let's drill, okay? We're gonna drill, okay? And, uh, oh, hey, let's tap that sucker now. And we tap, okay? And then, oh, final, or well, actually, I probably would have, I probably would have uh, chamfered the ed edge of the hole before I, uh, before I tap, but uh, anyway, you get the idea, right? So, now it has rings on here, and there's a, uh, if you really want to be an animal, you can reef on this here like that and, uh, and really crank it down. But um, it's kind of positively, uh, it's kind of positively locked. Um, uh, by the ears, right? And uh, so what I do is I just kind of preload it in the uh, in the direction of uh, rotation there, and uh, and then it's, it's pretty happy. Okay, so quick switch engineering, and um, you know they they make tailstock turrets, right? That are at an angle, and then they rotate, and it presents a tool on center line. Now my only criticism of those is when you have a bunch of tools on them, it's like a uh, porcupine back here with a bunch of stuff sticking off of it. This is all pretty. Uh, pretty compact. I mean, you could mount, you know, a small live center uh, in one of these too, right? So you wouldn't even need to change this then. And, um, and Bob's your uncle, right? So quick switch engineering. Um, and what size is this? This is a size 80, I think. Um, I don't, I don't quite know their, uh, their sizing scheme. Okay. And, uh, oops, somebody's, uh, somebody wants to get a hold of me. So, okay. Quick switch.